Welcome back to the show, everyone. If you're here on YouTube, know this is a podcast and you can download it and take it with you instead of watching us talk. But of course, we love to have you watch us talk. If you're listening to this on the podcast, we did a YouTube, we did a video. Come on over to jjflazanes.tv. If you haven't met Shona Home yet, because we've interviewed her before, Isha Wisdom is her first book. And that was the Mind Sacred the teachings of my and sacred feminine was I what I think I called that show. Uh, and it was a long time coming, it was divine timing. And we're back for another one because she has a few more books. And in between that one and this one, I've been reading Love and Spirit Medicine. And this is going to bring us a little bit closer to a little more up to speed. There was a little bit of a gap there from the first book to the second one. Um, but I'm excited to have this conversation. Welcome back to the show, Shona. Thank you. It's good to be here. All right. So you show wisdom. So you're getting these downloads. You write this book about sacred teachings for the uh, sacred feminine. And then and from what I remember, there wasn't a lot of, or correct me if I'm wrong. I don't remember plant medicine in that book. No, there was none. None. Okay. <laughs> All right. And um, <laughs> you hadn't had any, any of those experiences yet. Right. So after you wrote that book, what happened next? And what leads us to the next book into love and spirit medicine? I think probably maybe a year or so later, I had heard about, I was hearing about ayahuasca. And, and so I was interested in that. And I had a good friend at the time who took it for the first time with uh, a friend of ours who knew someone who brought this uh, shaman over from, I think it was Bolivia. And I couldn't go that weekend. And so she had the experience. And then she tells me the following uh, Sunday or Monday, how it was, you know, it's this powerful deal. And then she said, well, then I got into my tent. We all finally went to bed. They were up almost all night. I went into my tent and the shaman came to my tent and and came, you know, entered and, and unzipped my sleeping bag and just got next to me and just snuggled. It was really intimate and beautiful. And I was like, you know, I don't know anything about ayahuasca, but I don't think the shaman is supposed to like come in your tent, and like get in your sleeping bag. What's this guy's name again? And she told me. And so I looked him up and I found, now granted, this was like 13 years ago. I found a blog. Uh, devoted to him with all these women who'd been molested by this guy. And, and apparently he was very unapologetic about it. So anyway, I just, I was incredulous and I sent it to her. I'm like, we are, we cannot work with this guy again. And uh, I remember asking just kind of, you know, spirit, whatever. I just said, where are the female ayahuasqueras? Where, where are those women? And within a month, Someone let me know about these two just wonderful women who were hosting an all women's ayahuasca, uh, ayahuasca ceremony outside of Seattle. And these women had studied for a number of years in Peru with this shaman. They were on the up and up. And so I decided and my friend decided we would go for two nights. And so I had my first ayahuasca experience and she absolutely kicked my ass. And uh, I was, because I, I must preface this by saying, I don't drink alcohol. I don't take any pharmaceuticals. I keep a very safe distance from conventional medicine. I don't smoke pot, you know, like I, you know, I don't do drugs. Oh, pot obviously is a different thing, but in any case, whatever, I don't imbibe, I don't do recreational anything. I'm pretty athletic and, and I just have a pretty healthy lifestyle. In any case, because I was studying so deeply, a student being a student of, of the shamanic path and, and the Jungian piece with my teacher, Brew, and I don't know, this was a natural piece for me that, okay, there are plant medicines and, and they're calling. So I had that experience and then I tried it again with a, a man who everyone was sort of raving about, oh, you've got to work with this guy, he's amazing. And I had that experience and it just came to me. This is not your medicine. I wasn't feeling it. 
And and I had a teacher at that time, John Knowlton, who he would come to the house of my husband at the time and myself for two years. And we would have four weekends out of the year. There was a group of 10 of us who had committed to this. I would make all the food and he would come and teach us. It was amazing. And I remember talking to him about the experience. And before I said anything further, he said, you know, it's not your medicine. And I was like, I know, I just had that realization too. So thank you for the confirmation. And so Beyond that, I guess a few months went by, but I was feeling a call of the mushroom. And again, like I'd never, I'd never done mushrooms, of course. And so I asked a good friend of mine at the time who was actually part of that group with John Knowlton. And, and I knew he worked with medicines and I just said, would you induct me into that experience? And he lived uh, up in the rainforest of, of Washington and it was just exceptionally beautiful up there and he had always said you got to come up and check this out you would love this place and so he said yeah sure let's let's make that happen and so in July of 2011 I had my very first mushroom experience in this gorgeous mossy rainforest outside in the dark of night with the sound of a waterfall nearby and we were listening to Terrence McKenna at the time and he he is, for those who don't know Terrence, he died, I think, in 2000. But he was quite a voice for the use of, of these plant medicines, particularly the mushroom. You can go on YouTube and listen to Terrence McKenna. He was very much a bard, quite a way with words. He was very brilliant and charismatic. And just, uh, I mean, I would have loved to have met him. In any case, he would advocate doing what he called a heroic dose, which is five dried grams lying down in silent darkness. And so that's what we decided to do. Now, I I think five dry grams is an awful lot, like for a lot of people, I don't actually recommend it, uh, but that's what we did. And so I had a very, very powerful experience that night to the point where I had a an unexpected and profound healing experience with the, the earth mother and when I got out of that experience the following day, I, I was absolutely incredulous. And I remember saying, this is a portal. Mm -hmm. This is a natural God-made mm -hmm. portal. And this is a very old, ancient teacher. And, and so I got home. Actually, I should say, when I had the experience that night, I saw Pam and uh, the Lord of the Forest. And a few days later, I, I was hosting a group of women. We were going to do a fire ceremony. And one of the women there asked me if she could photograph during the fire. And I said, sure. And that night, she sent me a bunch of photos of the ceremony. And she sent me a few photos of the fire. So I sort of picked some photos from the ceremony, a random picture of the fire, sent it off to my friend up in the rainforest. And he wrote back and said, I dig the face in the fire. And I was like, what face in the fire? And this is the power of the deep psyche, right? Like it'll, so anyway, I go through and I look at what I sent him and in the fire, there was a profile, a perfect profile of Pam. There was an eye where an eye should be, a nose, lips, a goatee, and even a little horn. And, and I just, I couldn't even believe it. But that image bypassed the conscious mind, but clearly the deep psyche, which is an amazing thing, knew exactly what it was doing. And Anyway, so that that was that was mind blowing. And after that, I was just like, I have to go back. I want to go through this portal again. This is really this has rocked me. This is very important. And so back up, I went to the Washington Rainforest for another experience outside. And so I proceeded to go up there every month for five or six months. And and every time it was outside, I mean, it was getting colder and colder as the fall came on. But I was having these extraordinary experiences and I ended up with 12 months in a row of these mushroom experiences with five, six grams and each experience kind of built on the next. And there was a lot of emphasis on my own inner work that needed to be done at the time, but I was also coming into mediumship. So there were spirits that would come in and then express through me. And I began writing about it probably after, you know, two or three times, three or four times, three or four experiences. I thought I need to write this down. And I was writing down each and every journey. And 
that ended up becoming the book that you are reading, Love and Spirit Medicine. So that was written, my goodness, 12 years ago now, 11 or 12 years ago. And it chronicles that first year of monthly journeys. And it also discusses the, the demise of my marriage, which was ending at the time. And, and just that whole journey, which was absolutely life-changing. And also at the time I was doing a lot of research because I'm a natural researcher. And I was looking, I was reading every book I could on the mushrooms because it was a whole new world to me. I did not know that world. You know, it wasn't part of like the psychedelic community. I'm still not really, but I just, you know, I wanted to understand this. And I was looking for books written by women and I couldn't really find anything. I found an amazing book on ayahuasca by Margaret DeWeese called Black Smoke, which was about her journey. And it was really excellent book. But I was looking for a woman's telling. And, and so the way I describe love and spirit medicine is that it is a raw, vulnerable woman's telling because I just put it out there like, this is my journey. This is some shadow stuff that I'm working on, you know, like just, and I just think that you know, men are superb storytellers as well. But I just think of like women, we tell it. I mean, we can really let our hair down and bear all. And uh, and so, yeah, so that was it's a long time ago. It feels now, you know, so much has happened since then. But I still, every so often, I'll get an email from someone who read that book. And they're just like, my God, thank you for your raw honesty. And thank you for the wisdom and the humor. There's humor in that book. There's there's a lot. And so, you know, each journey, journey, as much as I could possibly remember is, is chronicled. And it was just, it was extraordinary. So beyond that, I ended up putting myself out there as an older woman's voice for the reverent use of this medicine. You know, it's not recreational to me. I've never been to Burning, Burning Man. You'll never see me there. Oh my God. It's just not my scene. Uh, yeah, for me, it is, it's a portal and actually what has happened over the years is you know, I, I, I'm a Celtic woman, I'm Irish Scottish. I had a wonderful Irish grandmother who was just a fantastic storyteller when we were very little. She would tell us about the fairy and, and I could feel them as a child because I am claircognizant and clairsentient. And so I had that growing up. In any case, through the mushroom, I've connected to a number of beings, but primarily a group that refer to themselves as the shining ones you call the she. And I recently found out that actually in Ireland and certain parts, they call the she the shining ones. So I, I found that out actually from a woman who was sitting at my kitchen table here for a retreat from Ireland. So she delivered me that, that little bomb. <laughs> I was like, oh my goodness, are you serious? So so that was wonderful confirmation. And that's the thing, when you start working with these kind of medicines, Terrence would talk about synchronicities. These wonderful synchronicities start happening. It's like something in this realm opens up and starts conversing with you. And that's what I think of these synchronicities as a kind of conversation. So, so what happened was after maybe three years or so, Every time I'd go into the mushroom state, which would be just when I was called, I don't go every month. I, that was just one year. But when I'm called to go in, uh, I speak in perfect rhyme. So these beings come through. And so I just bring a digital recorder. I turn it on. I put it on my pillow. And just whatever comes through is recorded. And so I have a lot, a lot, a lot of this beautiful poetic transmissions from these beings. And I read a number of books on uh, fairy folklore of the, the Celts. And I read uh, several months ago that it was thought that poetry was a gift from the fairy, from the she. So just little kind of wink, wink, nudge, nudge, you know, like that will, will come every so often, which is very affirming. And uh, yeah, and then at the age of 52, so I'd been working with the mushrooms for about four years by then. One of my clients, because I do sessions, uh, mentoring, therapy, whatever, 
And she, I'd been working with her for a while and she asked if there was any way she could come out and stay with me for a few days, soak up some knowledge and do a ceremony. And, and I was like, well, let me think about that. Let me figure out how that would work. And I figured it out and she came and it was absolutely amazing. And then the following week I had a client in person come and she would come regularly. And so I sort of told her what I did, like, Hey, I had this person come and just as kind of a making conversation. And she said, well, I would like to do that. I had no idea you, you offered that. How, how much do you charge? And I was like, I don't, I don't know. So I ended up working with her. Then a friend of mine told friends in New Jersey, a couple, they flew out to work with me. And then I really started realizing this is getting very real. I guess this is what I'm going to be doing now. And so I crafted the way the retreat would go. And I'm in my ninth year now of doing retreats and people fly in from all over. And I only work with one person in my home. It's very intimate and uh, really powerful work. So, so yeah. And here, here we, we are. are. <laughs> well, I'm curious because as we discussed before I hit record, you know, two years ago, two years ago, this would have been interesting, but not as I wouldn't have absorbed it. I wouldn't have been tracking the same. I wouldn't have been as curious. I wouldn't have been as personally interested as I am now because I don't know if I shared it on our last show. So I, I've worked with um, some prominent naturopathic cancer doctors and researchers and authors and now hospital builders. And, um, and you know, it took me a couple of years of hearing different people do different things. Like I have a friend that has done ayahuasca several times. That is absolutely not my medicine. I didn't know why it wasn't until I worked with a shaman uh, with some San Pedro. And he described to me that the way that that plant works is that it strangles other plants near it. And I was like, oh, well, that might be why energetically it's not mine because the way that it behaves in nature. Um, but I, it wasn't because of the vomiting or the purging or anything like that. It just, it never resonated. And I trust my intuition that when something doesn't resonate, I don't need to question it. Even if everybody else and their mother's doing it, it's just probably, or at least it's just not the right time. And it when with, and with like MDMA or, or psilocybin, I, I still wasn't really ready. And then it was a conversation about Doug's anxiety or something and, and sort of control issues. And, and then looking at how cancer patients have outlived their diagnosis after doing a heroic dose. Then I started to click into, oh, okay. Because I've ever, the only way I've heard of it being done was recreationally. And even if people think they're doing therapeutically, if there's 20 people in the room with you, that is not therapeutic. Okay. That is still recreational. Um, and there's music going and you're all like awake and, and your eyes are open and you're all having like a similar, I mean, yes, you can be having your own experience in a room full of other people having their own experience. But to me, for the limited amount, and I've done at this point, I did one group, two groups, if you consider the San Pedro, uh, one mushroom group, but it was really like one other person on the medicine and, and two people who were holding the space and had, you know, were running the ceremony. One was playing music and, and they were both sort of attending to us. But even that, um, you know, I had done psilocybin and MDMA, but it wasn't enough and it wasn't strong enough. And I, in, in the minute that I was told sort of like, I know, I remember you're in Aries, the all or nothing switch went on in me when I, when I understood the therapeutic benefit, when I understood that, see for me as a Sag moon, if you tell me something, or if I see a pattern of behavior in my life, I'll change it. If I go, if I all of a sudden, because it's like, I can't unsee it anymore. <laughs> if someone points out a behavior, like I just thought about this today, something in my own life where I saw the pattern and I went, wait, and I identify the pattern and I understand why I'm doing it. Like I'll stop my behavior immediately when it deeply resonates because Sag is about truth seeking. So the minute I see a truth, it will literally change my behavior. Now, most people aren't like that. <laughs> most people, you can tell them 20 million times that they need to do something. Or if they say, I want to lose weight or I want to get healthier, or I need to let this go or whatever the thing is, if they are, there's a certain amount of, of understanding consciously that doesn't matter, they're not going to change that behavior for many different reasons, right? And so when I understood that this plant medicine could be used therapeutically and why, and sort of the override, if you will, of your neurological patterns and circuitry, <clears throat> and just getting through doing whole brain living with, with Dr. Joe Bolte Taylor and the different characters of the brain and, and having something that opens up new neural pathways very quickly, 
where you have other ways you can open up neural pathways, but this felt like an override. An override of like, okay, cool. We're going to either shut down the left and turn on the right, or we're just going to open up. It's not about numbing. It's about opening and about activating to me. Like that's how I understood the science of all of this to go. And of course I did my, my homework. I did my research and then I just trusted my own intuition. And, um, and I actually have a strain and use it in a concentrated form that it's not in the plant. So I think it's a little versus like if you weigh mushrooms and you say you have five grams of mushrooms, it's not five grams of psilocybin, it's five grams of mushrooms. And maybe it's 4.8, but it's still, there's still some plant material in the actual mushroom. And I have a concentrated psilocybin that if it's five, it's five. Um, and it's, and I, and I didn't know, like you had people leading you and I did have somebody helping me and leading me and guiding me, but I also just sort of took a journey to say, I'm going to test this out. I'm going to test out different amounts. I'm going to test out what this does. I, and I'm just going to sort of, you know, have some support and I'm going to have, because the integration piece is what I do in life too, right? Like you so you're coaching and, and counseling people and helping them. And this is a tool to help sort of break through some of those patterns and have the portal. I love that word. Oh my God. Like, what did I say? Tell somebody I crossed over <laughs> like on four, four and a half grams. I crossed over. Like I went one, two, like I can outline and I probably sh should start writing um, all the different journeys because they're all very different. The amounts made different experiences and it was just really amazing. And I've been leading people that work with me and listen to the show, like through like you one-on-one -on -one, little mini many journeys and in trying to dose based on what do I think that like, what do they need? Like you said, five is a lot for a person. I think five is a lot for a person if they're super conscious. Like I haven't even done five yet. I did four and a half, but, and that was a portal, absolute 100% portal. I was not on this earth in that moment. And, and nothing prior to that had done that. Three didn't do that. Two didn't do that. One didn't do that. It was only when I crossed a four and a half that that this whole new experience of I, where I really understood its power, where I understood the why cancer patients on a heroic dose see God and feel and don't and see there is no death and see eternity in life and 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 lose the fear of death and lose some of the attachments that they have in this life, which cause the stress that their body's under, which doesn't allow them to heal, that prevent the healing. And, um, and so, but portal, I hadn't thought of that word. And that is the perfect word portal um, for that. So, so for me now that I'm reading your book, right. Cause like I said, a year ago, I've been reading it like, Oh, she does. She does psychedelics. That's nice. Like, <laughs> like, like, Oh, that's interesting. I don't understand why people, you know, I mean, I probably would have been curious. I probably would have at some point been like, Oh, okay. I, cause I saw your progress. And again, I'm only halfway through the book purposely because I, if I read this whole book, we, you and I'd be having a whole different conversation. And I want people to, who are curious uh, to get the book so that you can start to hear and see and track some of your own healing, you know, in terms of our, our alignment in so many ways, I don't, I mean, I do drink wine and I'm now a winemaker, but, um, but other than that, I don't smoke pot. I've never smoked cigarettes. I don't take, I don't take pharmaceuticals. I eat very healthy and clean. I mean, I, I was a personal trainer and I have a wellness business. So all of that too, which is why I've always stayed away from drugs, but this isn't, but this is a plant. <laughs> this is a plant that grows in the ground that you don't necessarily have to do anything to except put it in your mouth. And it creates this experience the, and this portal and this potential healing, which may look very different for a lot of people. So now the curiosity about, and then, you know, learning about it and learning about the history of and why, and the threat that it has to some of our belief systems and, you know, and how it's been used in rituals and all the different kinds of medicines from mescaline to MDMA to LSD to psilocybin and even tobacco and learning a little bit about all of those, uh, after doing a few others, I can say like you, that the mushroom is, is my medicine, uh, because I love how it, like you have podcasts. And so let's talk about your podcasters because this goes along with, um, and I thought it was perfect again in the place that I am now. So we, you and I couldn't have had these conversations years ago when I first found your book, because I wasn't up to speed yet with, with any of this stuff. So I couldn't, I couldn't appreciate the depth and the power of what you're doing and what you did and sort of how you've pioneered that. Um, I'm late to the game, but I'm happy to get involved and to hopefully help spearhead the awareness and the possibility 
for people to heal and have experiences and not wait till their deathbed to look back at their life and do a life review or not get to a place where they've repeated patterns over and over again and therapy's not working and any of the, and, and pharmaceuticals aren't working and they feel dead inside and they're just numb because they're, you know, that's not a way to live. And that's not what I promote on the show. I bring people on to talk about how to, how to love, how to feel happy, how to turn on your brain, how to turn on your body, how to get back to being in alignment and center yourself. So let's talk about when you, when you started your podcast and like where in that journey. So I'm guessing obviously it was after you published this book. Yes. It's only been just over a year. Okay. That I've been doing it. So I, I used to do a monthly newsletter and I did that for probably a good 10 years. And, and so I would just write about whatever I wanted to write about. And, you know, I started out with around a hundred and a hundred people and, and then people would subscribe. And so, so I did that for a long time and I stopped that in mid 2020, just cause everything went very sideways at that time. I was like, all right, I'm off of social media. Uh, I'm very blessed that I have people, you know, who come work with me. I'm going to bow out of any kind of, well, there was no conversation because you weren't allowed to have a different opinion. But anyway, so I was like, we're done. And uh, <laughs> and then let's see, summer of 2022, it just came to me like, you know, a podcast could be really really cool, really fun. And I, I'm not the kind of person, like, I don't worry about, oh, there's thousands of podcasts and whatever. It's not, it's a way for me to get information that I think is really relevant and important out there. And because I am a researcher, I've re I mean, I just, I go very deep in different subjects that interest me. And, and so it's my way of, it's almost like kind of my sword in this lifetime is my pen and, uh, and my voice. Right. So, so I'm, I'm able to kind of get information out there that I think is important. And so, yeah, so I, I will do solo, you know, where I'm talking about a subject and then I will interview people. And, and so, and I'm now sort of booked a year out in terms of, you know, between people and different subjects I want to speak to. And it's called the mushrooms apprentice. And so it's both medicinal and magic mushrooms, but also as an apprentice, these last 12 years, where have the mushrooms taken me in terms of areas of study? And one of those areas is law. And that was on a mushroom journey many years ago where I was actually sitting at the base of these old growth tree roots and the roots were speaking to me. And they, I was calling myself an earth citizen. And they said, do not call yourself an earth citizen. Citizen is a Roman word. You are an earth sovereign. And that's all they said, because of course the beings and the fairy are known for this of speaking in sort of rhyme and riddle. And they'll, I would always say they give me a little clue and then I'm expected when, when I come out of it to do the digging. And so that's what I did. And I got deep into a study of natural law and I fell in love with that subject. I also, when I was researching the ancient Druids and particularly the women, and there isn't a whole lot out there because of course they didn't write anything down, but there are Roman accounts and the Romans would write about, you know, they were deeply learned in law. The Druids were the learned priestly uh, class uh, uh, among, among their people. So they held the, the knowledge and the Romans were blown away when a woman, a Druid woman, would be brought in to judge on a major matter. They just couldn't believe it. And, and that really spoke to me. I thought, not only are these people learned in all these areas, and including magic, but they're also highly learned in law. And that is something that your average person has no clue about. I certainly had no clue about. They don't teach us anything about that, our own system in school. And so I've been studying the deeper tenets of that ever since and feel like I think of myself as an initiate or an apprentice, if you will, you know, and just and, and studying with these these just very potent teachers. And then I get led to the study with other teachers like my latest teacher now is John of Salisbury, who wrote a book in 1179 called the Metalogicon, and that's on the trivium. 
And uh, the trivium is grammar, logic, and rhetoric, and then the logical fallacies. And that is a proper foundational education. And it was known as the liberal arts and the seven liberal arts, because once you've mastered the trivi trivium, the tri, the three, then you learn the quadrivium, which is uh, uh, arithmetic, um, astronomy, music, and geometry. And, and anyway, so so I call them my teachers from the ethers and and I, I really, I think also that mushroom has really shifted my brain. And it does, of course, open centers in the mind and connect them with the conscious mind. But my, and I, and I also, and I've seen this over and over and I've seen it in my own life that it really seems to enhance whatever your proclivities are. And we're all very different. We're all wired very differently. And we all come in here with gifts and talents unique to, to us. And so it has made me even more psychic than I already am. And sometimes I wonder if it's just even, I don't know, it's stimulated a lot of my research, that's for sure. And, and my desire to, to learn. I'll be a student for the rest of my life with, with this. So anyway, so back to the podcast, that is a way of, you know, sort of bringing forth this information that people aren't going to necessarily hear especially people who maybe are interested in what I'm interested in, but they're not going to necessarily know anything about law, you know, or, or iodine or DMSO or, you know, any of these other things that I research and, and talk about. So it, it, you know, it's not for the money because I'll be happy if someday I make back what I put into that. But I have a great, uh, amazing woman, Lakshmi Narayan, and she runs awake.net and that is focused on, psychedelics for addiction and also the spiritual side of these psychedelics or entheogens as they are also called and and it's a 501c3 i'm on their board but she's also an amazing website designer so she did the podcast website for me and uh she's just hugely gifted anyway and well worth the money so blah blah <laughs> that's the podcast and i am going to be doing a lot more teaching especially coming into 2024. So I'm going to be co-teaching with my friend, Venice McNeil, who's the producer of a series called Magical Egypt, which is absolutely mind blowing. They've got a big following and, and they should. So they have like Graham Hancock and all these amazing uh, thinkers. Uh, they've so, so I'm in featured in the fourth season, which just went live, I think last week. And I think it's called Heka, H-E-K-A, but it's Magical Egypt. And then Venice and I are going to be teaching a, a year-long course called More Than Magic. And it's going to be very, very in-depth and a lot of fun. So we're launching either January or February. So, so yeah, so I'm going to be doing a lot more of that and probably less emphasis on the retreats. I mean, I always have people coming, but I, I'm ready. At nine, nine is a number of completion, hmm. you know, and so I'm, I'm ready to kind of broaden my reach, even though at the same time I... I much prefer, uh, you know, to be sort of in the safety and the quiet of kind of a cocoon. And, and of course I work one-on-one, -on -one, right? So I love that, but life is saying no, dear. Plus my North Node is in the 11th house, which is the house of groups. <laughs> it's like, no, you have to broaden your reach now and get out there more. I actually just put myself on Facebook this morning. For the first time? Well, no, I, I was on there. I took myself off in 2020. My page actually blew up because uh, <laughs> I had an alternative opinion. But in any case, uh, don't worry. So did most yeah, people who listen to the show. But you know, someone who's very good at at marketing was just like, "Look, you need to be on social media." I know you hate it. I call it sewer media. But they're like, "No one, no, you know." He's like, yeah. "I went through your website, your podcast, your material is excellent." And no one's no one can you. find you. Right, <laughs> right. Well, I came to him like, "Hello, would you please?" promote like put your book up because i can't buy i can't sell it to yes. anybody yes you shall wisdom without a print that's right yeah yeah <laughs> like hey everybody go buy this book and they're like it's 300 dollars. like what <laughs> like because there's only like people are selling used copies i'm like well hold on why is this in print well but i will tell you because after i said that to you because i have three books and i'm working on my fourth the third book went through a publisher that I didn't really, like, I wanted to cancel the contract once we were like halfway into it. And then anyway, 
So it kind of had a life and then it had a death. And so my book was kind of the same. So here I am telling you to put your book up. So I'm like, well, I better do the same thing. So I'm currently in this red hot moment, finishing the audio book version, which I've never done. And the new cover's done, The I'm formatting it. So within before the end of 2023, that book will be back up um, for good. And I will own it. I will have the rights to it. And that's the end of that. So, <laughs> because I'm like, here, I'm telling you to do it. And I, people can't even buy my book. So I thought, take your own advice um, again, but I'm the one promoting yours. I wasn't promoting mine. Uh, because again, I've sort of, my last book, Invisible Fitness Formula was dedicated to my 25 years as a personal trainer and sort of everything I had learned up until that point, because I knew I was moving away from doing just the health and fitness part, because I was literally already emotionally coaching people and, and taking people through all kinds of uh, emotional journeys. And that's where I really wanted to stay because as far as I'm concerned, the energetics of our emotions are the most magical, uh, healer and, uh, of, of all. So uh, whatever clean diet, not clean diet, drugs, no drugs, ultimately frequency and vibration are going to heal everything. So, and I don't care if you're, you know, squeaky clean on other levels, if you have a, a body that's emanating anger and resentment and fear all the time, that body is not going to heal nor be healthy. So, um, and so because of that belief, because of that knowing I can't in good faith, continue to talk about just the outside and just the outside and just the outside. It's about the inside and the inside and the inside. And that's, so I knew I was moving, I was graduating. I was, and then I had had a divorce also, and I kind of played small. I knew I could only grow as far as he'd accept. I would, I would only willing to go as far as and reach and stretch and grow and, you know, spread my wings, so to speak, to the point where I thought he'd accept it. And, um, and of course, when that marriage transitioned and I manifested my soulmate, like within two hours, uh, you know, my wings have been spread and I've been like leaping and bounding and going and, and creating and, and living in a much higher frequency all the time and really just trusting without yeah, I jump. I'm a jumper. I'm a risk taker. I'm a jumper. I have an idea. I go, yes. Like that's like with this whole medicine, plant medicine thing. I was like, no, I'm like, again, I wasn't against, I just had no resonance. And all of a sudden one day it was like the light switch went on and I was like, oh, okay. I'm on this now. And, and why I wanted to talk about the podcast also is because you're the, the title of the podcast. So the, the mushrooms apprentice. So after, I guess really I've only tried two medicines, I guess. Um, I love San Pedro. I thought it was an amazing experience and it really did shift and teach me something. I don't know that I could have embodied without it, uh, but I don't know if it's a medicine I can, I want to continue doing. I don't feel like there, there was a, there's like a rep, like, I feel like I got what I needed from that and I'm complete, but what my experience has been so far with, with psilocybin has been that every time I go in, I'm being led. And it's, and even between, so I'd had one of my clients come to do a journey and, uh, and I had, I was going to give her a three grams and I hadn't had three grams before. So I thought, well, I need to do it. I need to know that I wasn't, I still, I've been inching my way on the fear thing. I'm like, okay, I have to experience. And now I've, I feel very confident about, and I'm working with the person who, who produces this and makes it, but I, I thought, let me, let me do this first. So I did it. And from two to three, oh my gosh, it was a whole, two was a nice ride. It was beautiful. It was colorful. It was like right brain was like, yay, colors, yay, wonderfulness, see things. Um, la Like it was just, it was bright. And um, for me, and uh, I mean, it had some moments of, of release, but three was like, a, it was like a portal into my heart. Three kind of opened up things that I had been holding onto that I knew I was. And I'd had this sort of experience of realizing that I'm holding on to pain. Cho I'm choosing, I'm choosing to hold on to pain. And in that moment, I was like, why am I holding on to this pain? This pain is not serving me. This pain is blocking me. This pain is, is creating disconnect with a loved one. And, you know, and I'm crying and I'm like, I'm wailing and I'm, and I'm thinking I, I want to keep going. I don't feel like this is complete. I don't feel like I'm empty yet. I don't feel like I'm completely through this. So I got to the end of that thinking, okay, I'm going to go back in because that's not done yet. <laughs> okay. So, so then between that and then my San Pedro, because I wanted to have a clean, I didn't want to go in with expectation. I wanted to go in completely like open to anything, ready for anything, but I didn't feel complete with the three. So I'm like, okay, I'm going back in because I feel like there's some more there. And I came out of that laughing and crying while well, I was crying the whole time, but I came out of that going, okay, the joke is that you think you're going to tell them where you're going. I'm like, oh no, 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 no. I went in and there was none of the other things there. Like that was where I got ported. I portaled to another, to, I portaled. And nothing that had happened in the previous one happened again. And it was this, oh, I'm really being led into whatever my soul is calling me to learn in this moment. And 
it's not a giving up of control. It's a willingness to be open to the message, the message that's resonant in that minute. So when, when I looked at your podcast and thought of that, and again, this is before some of the other deeper journeys, like the mushrooms apprentice, like, Hmm. And now I'm like, oh yes, yes, yes. Because you are not in charge. I am not in charge. There's, I can make an intention, but where I'm going to go, I have no idea. I just know it's where I need to go. Maybe there's a higher intention that I've set that should, that how the, how that kind of plays out. Like I noticed in, in, I'm probably on how many, I think you've had four or five. I might be four or five months into your 12 month journey. And I've seen your, your different journeys and how they've, morphed and how they've changed and how they've unlayered and gotten you to different places. And which I'm, by the way, I'm curious as to, was there someone that suggested, or is that just you that said, I'm going to do 12 months of a journey? No, that was, I I had no intention of, it just happened. It just happened to be 12 months in a row, which is very interesting. It's like the deep psyche was ultimately in charge, not my conscious mind, because that's a very powerful number. (laughs) Yeah. Well, and I, I mean, and there's no, I guess, you know, for me growing up as a many, many Sag planet person, Pisces, uh, to me, drugs, even alcohol, whatever, any misuse of something to make up for something inside felt like, uh, like, well, I don't want to do that. Like, oh, I'm not going to do a drug to be happy. I need to know how to be happy without the drug. The drug, if drug makes me happy, then that that's an attachment. That's a dependence on something that I never really was interested in. I didn't like the dependent part of drugs, alcohol, even food, whatever, codependent relationships. I've always had that sort of independent, like you have to learn how to be this by yourself or, you know, in with God, with source, with whatever, in order for you to be truly in your power. If something else enhances that, great. But it's not, a, I'm unhappy, let me go here and get happy. And so I think that for me was always the resistance for whatever, drugs, alcohol, whatever, and still is, you know, looking at someone who, and I think I I don't, I don't smoke pot and I, I can tell you probably on one hand how many times I've tried in, in the years in my entire life. And the, and the first two times I tried pot was for that very reason. I was in a situation where I was so miserable and they were having such a great time. I was like, fine, let me try it. And then it just made me worse. And I was like, Mm-mm. and then I did it again, thinking maybe the second time would be better. And it made me worse. I'm like, okay, never mind. Like I was right the first time. Stay away from this. It's making me worse. It's not making me better. And um, so the mushrooms apprentice was when I saw that, I thought, oh, yep, yep, I get that. Especially with, you know, with a very limited amount of experience I've had in doing other things, but just sort of being open to that, those teachings, those teachings that you you can't know what they are going in. And, but there is, there is a trust. There is a, there was a, a surrender. And, and if you're willing, there is a release of something and a, and a belief shift and a neurological repatterning and a, you know, and again, that, like you said, deepening and an unlayering and expansion. Um, it definitely that four and a half, that was the last thing I did. That was a life changer. I mean, they all were life changing in different ways, but that one was, yeah. And so, because I have, I do have clients and people who have cancer, who, um, I wanted to get it right. Not that there's, you know, if, if someone's coming to do like a one-time thing, I wanted to find what's going to be powerful enough, potent enough for that portal to happen. And, uh, and what's that dosage look like? Because, and I'm sure it's going to be different for everybody. When I asked the person, you know, where I, where I get it, I said, what's your, what do you do? She said three to 10. I was like, 10. Who needs 10? Oh my God. And I was like, it based on body weight? Is it based on cost? Like, nope. It's really, you know, so we kind of fine tune that sort of process of figuring that out. And someone's going to be intuitive um, when people don't have that, uh, don't have that, that calling or sort of, you know, if you have time to play, you have time to, to sort of, to, to test and to experiment. Um, yeah. I can just see this. I understand why this is so powerful and so important and for us to get out of our own way and to utilize the resources that are literally that are available to to us that have been here longer than us, right? Been here longer than us. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Been here. Let me say that again. Been here longer than us, not made in a lab, made on the earth. And there's something very sacred and powerful and life-changing. And um, so I, I can't wait to keep reading. So I read this in the, in the, in the bath 
And I got halfway through it and I thought, oh, I don't want to wait to the end because if we get to the end, you and I are going to have conversations about the entire book that everyone who's listening is not going to be able to track. So I wanted to make sure that you guys, if you're interested in learning, you know, and and going through the process with Shona, because she did go through a divorce and uh, through this and all of the different things that come up. And I do appreciate your vulnerability in this. I'm that way on this show. I don't hold back at all about really anything from divorce to sex to you know insecurities to relationships inner child work oh my god i got therapy on the show years ago and i'm ball and i'm like okay i will cry more later i just have to finish the show right so because i think it is important i think it's important for us to be willing to share the hard parts of the journey because we know that most people are going through it and they're they're cutting themselves off So the work that you're doing in the world, the education that you're providing, the books that you're writing, and the example that you're setting is to bring women together, and not just women, but bring women together in a powerful way that really accesses the parts of us that I think got lost and keep getting lost in today's world, Uh, that magical, spiritual, ancient, divine, super intelligent, source energy-based uh, and earth-based parts of us that really, if we understood that power that we had, we probably wouldn't have half the issues that we have right now, but we're living in such a world where we're looking at the news or in social media. You know, I like you had some, I, we probably have the same opinions about, about all the things you were talking about. And I had to play the dance on this show. I had to dance with the, how do I bring information without shooting myself in the foot? Because people lost their platforms overnight who were speaking their truth or speaking their science and it didn't match what the rest of the world agreed to or was alignment with. And all of a sudden, all the hard work that you have done has gone down the toilet. Um, and so people, you know, are afraid to be honest or speak their truth or share information because of the way that it's received these days. So I can imagine, especially in the world where this st- stuff is still very taboo, hush, hush, it's not mainstream. It's not supported. It's not, it's a threat to many of our, uh, medical helpers out there, um, you know, but to have somebody who is pioneering that. So I, I applaud you and thank you for, for being that. And for, I'm finally glad to have found this part of your work. Uh, again, like I said, the the first part of your work, I was introduced to many, many, many years ago. So it's, uh, it's fun to see where you've grown into and to learn from all of your wisdom and lessons and things that you're doing in the world. So if you were to Tell everybody, and I, you mentioned the classes that you're doing. Now, where could they find that? Where would they find all of the information for everything you've talked about today? Well, my website is shonahome.org. So they can find everything there. And the podcast is themushroomsapprentice.com. We're going to actually merge the two websites. So that should be done sometime this month. So, yeah. Excellent. Well, I look forward to know what's the next book after this? I... It's in the back of my mind and uh, it, I think it's going to be about the work that I do. So we'll, you, we'll, I thought you have another two books, but you published. I have Honeybee Wisdom, a modern Melissa speaks and I self publish that. I have another one that I am redoing for my publisher, which is called Poetic Whispers from the Green Realms. And so that features some of this, these transmissions, these poetic transmissions that have come through. And uh, there'll be two or three chapters kind of starting the book. And then it goes into these messages that are very beautiful. So, so yeah, so we're going to rework that. And, uh, and then that will be out in 2024, probably mid 2024, something like that. And then I will be writing my, my next book after that. Okay. Well, so, we'll have yeah. to have a conversation when you're done with that. Hopefully by the time you're done with that, I'm done with my fourth book, which I'm working on right now. Uh, it's a biggie. So it's not like all the rest of them. It's actually going to be transformative to write the book this time um, versus just give information I've already given. It's going. To, I'm going to have to go through my own journey while creating it. I mean, it's already taking me on a journey. It's going to change and morph. It's going to, it's, it itself is a journey <laughs> to write this book. In the past, I've written things that are like how to's. So I'm like, oh, easy. I've already told people how to do this on the podcast, or I've already been talking about this for however many years. So it's really going to be very interesting to see where this goes. And hopefully we can meet back again with our new, our new children books um, as they are. And, uh, and everyone check out everything that Shona's is doing. So whatever you heard today, if you're interested in any of it, go to her website, 
check in with her, let her know that you heard her on the podcast, get love and spirit medicine. If you're curious or interested, you want to start to learn more, but you're a little, you're not so sure yet. So you just want to start somewhere. Uh, this could be a good place to start and check out her podcast, the mushrooms apprentice. Thank you, Shona. Thank you.